People always tell me that my laugh is contagious. I'm often seen as one of the happiest, bubbliest girls in the world. But I have to tell you, this happiness isn't always sincere. I've been broken over and over again. I've been faced with choices. Do I choose to believe God is who he says, or do I choose to run? Today, I can tell you, I chose to surrender my brokenness. I chose and continue to choose to let Jesus rescue me and show me what true joy is. My name is Abby Kochman, and this is my yearbook. Hey, what's up, Wick? My name is Abby Kochman, and I'm a senior at Cambridge High School. <laughs> a lot of you guys might already know me. Maybe you've seen me leading in worship on stage or stacking chairs, probably, at some point. Um, just doing random work around the church, leading in Rise or Stone Creek Kids or just anything like that. But the thing I'm known for the most is my laugh. <laughs> um, <laughs> See, there it is. <laughs> Maybe you've heard it echo throughout the building before. Um, teachers will get on to me about it during class. My friends will shush me during late night sleepovers. But you can hear my laugh from a mile away and think, yep, there's Abby. But even though I'm often seen as the happiest, bubbliest girl in the world, I mean, I was even a cheerleader for nine years. Honestly, if I can be real with you guys, I've had a lot of reason to feel nothing but sadness and despair these last few years. My joy has been stolen. I've watched my whole life fall apart no matter how hard I've tried to hold it together. I've been faced with disappointment after disappointment. I've been broken time and time again, and each time it got harder for me to get back up, to feel joy, to even laugh. I grew up in an emotionally abusive household. My whole life I was told that I wasn't pretty, that I was too big to ever be beautiful. I had to weigh myself every day, and if I didn't lose the amount that was required, I would be grounded or punished in some way. I was put on restrictive diets. Um, at one point, I was only allowed to eat 600 calories worth of food a day. And for those of you who don't know, an average person is supposed to eat around 2,000 calories a day. That Chick-fil-A milkshake that we all love so much, yeah, that's 550 calories. So I was only allowed to eat 50 calories more than that. In addition to all that, I needed to perform large amounts of exercise. This led to me developing identity issues, eating disorders, and incredibly low self-esteem. I hated myself. My parents also went through a divorce my freshman year, something that is never easy, and it played into my confusion of my identity. So much changed for me throughout high school, and it was hard for me to find solid ground to plant my feet on. Sophomore year, I learned what it really looks like to walk with Jesus, to be in relationship with him. And through all of this, Jesus was constantly pursuing me, reminding me of my worth in him, reminding me that I am more than the numbers on the scale, that I am more than what others say about me. I am more than my family's dysfunction. I was growing, and things were looking good. I was ready for what I'd hoped would be a relatively easy senior year. Then... A couple months into my senior year, I was hit with another blow. My family was going through something really hard and I didn't know what to do. My grandfather was diagnosed with leukemia and it wasn't looking good. I went to visit him with some of my family and it was an incredibly difficult weekend. As my grandfather laid on his deathbed and looked me in the eyes and said, I will write you back into the family will if you promise me you will lose at least 40 pounds. Look at you. You must know you're not pretty anymore. I've never felt more hurt in my whole life. The only thing that I could think was how could God allow this to happen to me? How could I be going through this again? In that moment, I was faced with a choice. I could either believe those words, believe what was said about me, and run. I could run as far and as fast as my little legs would take me away from him and believe the lies and trust in something other than him. Or I could believe what the Bible says to be true about God, what God has proven to me to be true about himself, surrender my problems to him once again, and let him into my brokenness. In Psalm 51, 8 through 12, David writes, let me hear joy and gladness. Let these bones that you have broken rejoice. 
Hide my face from your sins and blot out all my inequities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Has anyone in here ever broken a bone? Yeah, yeah, me too. We're gonna get a picture up here of it. Yeah, not fun. Not fun at all. So all of you guys know who have broken a bone, and you can tell from this picture if you haven't, that breaking a bone is not a good time. So what on earth does David mean when he says, let these bones that you have broken rejoice? When you break a bone, you go to the doctor so they can do surgery on you. You can get a cast and let that bone heal in the protected area. Then the doctor will take the cast off, and you might have some physical therapy after. Maybe a scar will remain, but all in all, you're healed and good to go. But what happens if you don't go to the doctor? If you let the bone heal on its own? The bone will heal, but it won't heal right. It won't heal the way it was meant to. And it will always hurt. It'll be left out in the open, vulnerable, and you could bump into things and feel an insane amount of pain. And it will never be the way it used to. So say you broke a bone and you decide to go through the painful process of letting it heal on its own. But then, after a while, you decide to go to the doctor. What happens? The doctor needs to re-break the bone, the bone that healed incorrectly the first time, to put it in a position for it to heal correctly. And when that whole process is said and done, you might never be the same. Your arm might always bend a little funny, or you might walk with a limp, but you'll be better off than you were before. When we don't let Jesus into our brokenness, the areas of our lives where we've been hurt, when we don't let Jesus into our lack of self-worth, the hurt we've been feeling, the sin that we just can't escape, when we look towards other things to heal us, we will always be left with more pain, more longing, and without hope. When we let Jesus into our brokenness, he promises healing, redemption, renewal, and restoration. I choose Jesus. I choose healing. When I broke a bone, I got a blue cast and all of my friends got to sign it. I was in that cast for a month and then I had physical therapy for four months after that. When my life was falling apart, when bad things continue to come my way, when I doubt my worth, when cruel things are said to me, as my family continues to go through tough times, I choose Jesus. It has not been easy, but Jesus never promised us easy. He promised us better. And I might have a funky looking scar on my leg and two nails permanently in my knee, but those nails are nothing compared to the nails that Jesus took on the cross for me. Wrestle with God and let your limp be your testimony. You will never experience the intimacy of Jesus apart from suffering. Each and every day, Jesus restores the joy of his salvation in me. My spirit is renewed and I am forgiven. Stop running. Let Jesus rescue you. Surrender every area of your life, even your brokenness, and enjoy an eternity resting in the never-ending grace, the relentless pursuit, the unconditional love, and the joy of his salvation. My name is Abby Kochman, and this is my yearbook. <laughs>